Coming up, I find out what life is like for local Afghan women. Her husband was uh, addicted to the opium. Oh no. I discover what the previous regime did. What were they thinking? And I find a young man worthy of a warm jacket. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, it's yours. So I've come to a women's only bazaar in Bamiyan. Um, and it's the only bazaar of its kind in Afghanistan. And they sell, um, you know, a lot of the things that they've been making, a lot of their wares. So I'm really keen to, to see it and I'm really keen to support it. Now today is Friday, so they may not, all the shops may not be open, but some of them are, and we're going to have a little look inside. Many women in Afghanistan are shy to go on camera, so I had to be respectful about how much I filmed. Oh, so they've got clocks. And also the clothes that you were and talking look at, about. Oh, the bright clothes, look at them. They're so bright. Oh, they're really pretty. All these decorated bags. Are these made locally? Yeah. And they're so pretty, aren't they? In Bamiyan. And we've got jewellery. Look at this! This was really the first time I'd seen the cultural dress of Afghanistan. They're so colourful, aren't they? They are so colourful. And then the shoes. Oh, look at these bags, they're so... They're very nice, aren't they? And cushions. And the hats, I've seen the hats on men. And look at these clocks. They're very cool, aren't they? I love the clocks, wow. They're great, aren't they? Oh, that's gorgeous. Look at that. That's really lovely. They're heavy. And the little shoes down there. Interesting for me just to see what they have. Okay. <gasps> Walking through this bazaar and chatting to some women, I learnt how happy they are to be able to work. I hope with time we get to see more of this across the rest of Afghanistan. Is this like something that they would wear at a wedding? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm going to take a scarf. Can't have enough scarves and black goes with everything. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Black style there. Yeah, that, that feel, oh, it feels really, really soft. Thank you, so good. Uh, I say, um, Tashako. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> to remember my, yeah. I had to remember my yeah, words. Yeah. Great, got myself a little scarf. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> nice. It's always nice to support uh, women. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying my scarf on later. It looks like a very Afghan style. Amazing. Nice. Hello. Wow, I mean, this is a pretty impressive entrance. Amazing location. Let's see what happens when these gates open. Oh, checking the car. Okay. Look. Oh, wow. In we go. Check in the car. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yes. Minutes. Lovely. Sounds good to me. Let's see. Oh, well, look, there's the views there. Look at that. Get out of your way, sorry. Look, the Buddha caves are right there. Look at that view. Nice entrance. Wow. Ooh. Very nice. Look at this. Hello. Hi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Laugh every day, indeed. Oh look, we've even got the UK. Look, check this out. <laughs> there you go, how about that? Let's go check this hotel out. 212. That's rather nice, isn't it? There's the caves. 
I wrote with the Buddhas in. That's what the Buddhas would have been like. Until they're blown up. I can feel the altitude. It's high. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I feel out of breath. Wow. Oh my goodness me. Oh. This is amazing. Tasha Cool. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wow. Bye. Thank you. Oh. Wow. Look at this place. Oh my goodness me, I didn't expect this. And this is Afghanistan. And look at my view. I don't know what to say. I actually don't know what to say. And here we go. My bathroom. Look at this. Oh, I am going to be How's this look? Can't go wrong with the black scarf. Ah, oh, I like the detail of it. Look. Nice. Nice. So green. That's cute. Very nice. Oh, I'm going to save that. I'm going to wear that. I think I might be wearing black tomorrow. I'm going to save it for that. It was now time to witness what I consider one of the previous Taliban regime's biggest own goals of all time. In 2001, they blew up the two ancient Buddhas here, showing the world just how religiously and culturally intolerant they were. In doing so, they dramatically reduced their country's rich history overnight, as well as the opportunity for more tourism. When you see how massive the um, holes that have been left where the Buddhas were, I mean, they look enormous. They must have been very impressive. Uh, it's a great shame that, um, you know, a part of your own country's history, you, you would destroy yourself, kind of, it's the biggest own goal I can actually think of. Look how huge they would have been. Absolutely massive. You can see all the little caves um, dotted along where people will have stayed many, 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 many centuries ago. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. What's your name? Carrie. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Isara. Nice to meet you. Ah, nice. Okay, so, it's a bit windy here. I did a little bit of research. We're talking 6th, 7th century. One of them was 38 meters high and one was 55 meters high they must have been quite a sight to behold so <laughs> this is what's left here look all these rocks i mean it just they just look like rocks don't they it's hard to actually tell that it was anything significant to be honest this was a place of high importance for buddhists around the world so blowing it up must have been devastating for so many people but not only that, it was a big draw for visitors from all faith backgrounds. What were they thinking? I don't think I could fit through. Hang on. Well, touching history. Gosh. I'm trying to see if I can spot something that is recognisable as a shape not just a piece of, you know, rough rock. Can't see any um, colour on them either. I'm just stepping over. I'm just stepping over. I'm obviously trying to identify them. 
Wow. Goes on and on and on. I think I think I heard that one of them is completely annihilated, and one could be fixed. Um, and there are various agencies, like foreign charities, you know, that are trying to offer assistance and money to get them done. But for some reason. When you see a pile of rocks like that, it's hard to imagine how massive the Buddhas must have been. So let me help you. Right. So just to give you an idea of size, this is the small one. This is the 38 metre one. Just to give you an idea. This part of Afghanistan is incredibly beautiful. And whilst the historical sites have been purposely diminished, the landscapes certainly don't fail. It was now time to go and meet some more locals. So we've come to another village. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? That was a big tiger roar. Big tiger roar. Okay. Salam, salam. Hi, hello. I'd come to meet some women. I wanted to find out about their life in Afghanistan, but I wasn't allowed to film their faces. Do you explain that? <laughs> I won't film them. Hey. Hey. So cute. Right. Then. Now. Let's start. Tiny little sweet each. Um. And then. Right in my bag. I'm looking for. I have some little notebooks. We're going to give these kids. You have a very loud voice. You have a very loud voice. Very no you're very noisy. Hello. Look, you see yourselves there. Who's you? Hi. The other one is looking from the other side. Yeah, you see, it's you. It's one. And one. Mama. 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 One, one each. And then to the other kids, would they like one? Uh, there's lots of women that have come in here, um, which is really nice to have a look. I'm not filming them, um, but they're just sat here, which is great. A little cheeky one here. Uh. <laughs> wow, that's that's nice. She's asking you to yes. give her like four notebooks and three. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. One, two, three, four. Now we're giving some notebooks to some of the ladies here. So in this room, just to give you an idea, there's probably about two, four, six, eight, ten women. And there's some really young children, babies and toddlers and uh, that we're all just sat together um, and the lady whose house we're in she doesn't have a husband yeah. um, so and she has three children yeah three children. three children so obviously like that's a really difficult situation here because she can't work um, so life must be pretty tough her husband was uh, addicted to the opium Oh no! And it is three years, so she doesn't know where is he now and what. Way. He disappeared. <laughs> oh gosh! She didn't have any money to fill the gas cylinder, and uh, I think we came to a right place. And how old are her kids? Mega was quite young, almost six years old, four years old, and three years old. So six, four, and three. Yeah. Life is extremely tough for women in Afghanistan right now. The Taliban often say it's all to keep them safe. So far, their safety measures have included banning girls from education over the age of 12 for the last three years, severely restricting women from working, reducing women's pay, banning them from leaving their province to try and seek work elsewhere. Can you imagine being this single lady with three young kids and no real family? And it's not just the women at risk, it's the children. I gave this lady enough money to last two months. 
but she is just one of millions struggling to survive. Hello, Salam. Salam. Ah, well, that was tricky because all the women in there needed support. Uh, it must be so difficult if you're female in this country. Hey. Ah, oh, I mean, I can give more notebooks and pens. Yeah, we've got more pens in the car, haven't we? Yeah, okay. That's something we can do. Okay, hang on. Thanks. Yeah, we can do, we can do that. Right, we're handing out more pens and notebooks. You will never get a country on its feet without educating everyone to a high standard and getting everyone out to work. The idea of closing schools because gender segregation was deemed more important has been the biggest single mistake I think the regime has made to date. We're driving around um, the villages here now next to the uh, Buddha cave <clears throat> and I'm keen to try and find a family that have kids who are maybe around the age of like 10 to 14 because I've brought two really really warm coats from the UK that my boys have grown out of uh, and bearing in mind it can drop down to minus 32 here um, it would be great to find a family that would benefit from them there is a family yeah and it is also near the shrine it must be do these boys, do they get caught? Like, how do they feel in the winter? Could you ask them? It was cold. I had brought two warm coats plus a standard jacket, and now it was a case of seeing what fitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's bigger, I think. We'll give this to a smaller kid. At the end of the day, if it, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a tiny bit small, right? If it keeps him warm. You need to have two push. See. Because uh, that's better. Yeah? Yeah? You like it? It looks good. This suits you. Yeah, that's fine. And I think it doesn't matter if it's a tiny bit small because it'll keep him warm. I had another jacket that was really warm, but for a smaller child. However, it wasn't long before we found someone. Let's try this. Oh, looks like it might fit. I said this is for sale. <laughs> ah, I think it will fit him. This, this is a really warm coat, this one. So um, it'll keep him warm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. I never got garam for thee. They got a bit of nation maker. Bit like Cinderella. I asked him. I asked yeah. him, you're warm now. You don't need to see under the sunrise. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, and it looks good as well. Looks I like the colour. Yeah, nice. Yeah, and then he can give it to his brothers maybe when he grows out. She's asking you for having tea with her. That would be nice. Yeah, let's do it. Great. Got an invite for tea. <laughs> cool. Ah, oh, looks nice. I think that's the least you need when it goes to minus 32. <laughs> Great thing is, is that it looks like he's got younger brothers, so it can just be passed down as well. <laughs> Oh, wow. Shall I go in? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, great. Chai's on already. Brilliant. Look. Oh, fabulous. The chai. Oh, blimey. And there. Is this a, This is an oven. Yeah. Is, it, is, that, is, that, is that bread? Yeah, for bread. For bread. Yeah, bread oven. And there's the, the kind of wood in the oven. Amazing. And there we go. Great.
Great. Here we go. One, two. Hi. Ooh. Hello. Hey, the horn of the egg is not in the machine. Who is this? 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 Who is they're wearing different, yeah, trying to get tissue, wearing different clothes to the ladies in Kabul. They're wearing more colours, like dresses with a colourful scarf, uh, rather than, and they're showing their faces as well. Um, they have a different, a different look and style to other parts of Afghanistan that I've so far been to. The lady that we're with, it's really good that we sort of found her. Um, she has three boys, right? So three boys and two girls. And the eldest boy is, is the one that we gave the blue coat to. Um, and her husband passed away? Yeah, two years ago. Two years ago. So again, she's just really struggling to make ends meet. This lady has not been educated. Her daughters will not be educated beyond the age of 12. So now their only hope is the sons. Do her sons like really understand how important it is that they le study hard if they can? My daughter is one of her sons and she says he is studying hard. Yeah, because the, the change is in his hands, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, it's pressure on the boys. Yeah. You know, they need to do it. Cheers to studies. Yeah. Mm. Cheers to study. She's still st insisting you to stay for the night. Oh, that's very sweet. Say, so, 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 thank you. I say, Tasha, Tasha Kaur. Oh, it's very sweet. They, they're offering me... Uh, to sleep there for the night. It's very sweet. Thank you. Thank you. It's dinner time. It looks like we're at Shamama restaurant. Oh no, we're not. Yes, we are, I think. Hi. Is this Shamama? Okay. Yeah. Nice Welcome. to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is Shamama restaurant. Wonderful. We're sitting in an area for men. I was allowed because I'm a foreigner. If, however, I was a local lady, I wouldn't have been allowed to sit with any man unrelated to me. No, I met Alex earlier, and Alex is from Russia. <laughs> and we are both enjoying um, lovely Afghanistan. What's your opinion of Afghanistan? How long have you been here, and what are your, what are your feelings so far? I think it's my, like the day number six, seven, or day number eight. Yeah. I already like forgot. <laughs> How yes. long I'm here because like every day is always an adventure and it feels like I'm here already for a long time. Uh, of course, Afghanistan is the place I didn't expect that it to be this way. I thought that it will be more difficult to travel here, more problems with the authorities, so security issues. But in the end, it's one of the, for me, one of the safest place to travel so far. And. Uh, the most important here, of course, is the people. Offering you always a tea or to have a breakfast with them or lunch or dinner. And we went to Panjir and it was like really a uh, remote place and very traditional. And uh, then people just let us uh, to stay in uh, their house and like where for the guests. And some of them was even like almost like fighting with each other, like who will be the one who will host us. So. Yeah, that's amazing experience. Ah, look what we've got. Well, before it gets too cold, let's tuck in. Very nice to meet you. You want to try some? Oh, can I try some Afghan pizza? Or pizza made in Afghan? Yeah. Oh, let's have a go. Right. Let's see if, they, if uh, you've nailed it like the Italians. <laughs> 
And uh, can we ask for a knife? Mm. Yeah. Okay, do you like chocolate book? Very nice, very nice pizza. Mm. You recommend the quail. Is this one of your favourite dishes? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You like it? I have to try it. I'm not sure how it is. Quail, I just don't really understand. It's like a bird which is... Little one, little bird. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure what the taste is going to be. I haven't had quail in years. The flavours are lovely. I like the way they've cooked it. Ah, it's delicious. It's good. It's, it's good. We already finished all the meat. Yeah, I mean, that was quick. That, that went down quick. Yeah. <laughs> the food, I have to say, Afghan food is absolutely amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Love it. It was one yeah. of the... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he's, he's joking, he's eaten so much so fast. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, the interesting part about this uh, Kabuli plov that when they put a meat there, usually it's like huge piece of meat. And sometimes it's just hard to eat it yeah. and then it yeah. stuck in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I was um, really excited about actually was the food, trying the food. Alex and I sat together that evening and shared endless stories on Afghanistan, and both of us hope this country can prosper with time. And now I'll leave you with a beautiful shot of Bamiyan.